Hello, fellow Norathians and Araxians. Welcome to the 20th anniversary of EverQuest. Now today, I'm going to be covering both EverQuest and Planetside 2, and you're going to be seeing footage of both. If you happen to be someone that's here for content specific to either of those games, there's going to be timestamps down in the description, so you can skip ahead to just the Planetside stuff if that's what you're after. But back to EverQuest. I've seen everyone flexing about just how nerdy they are, sharing their history with the title and all the cool loot they have from purchasing the boxes over the years. So I've got to throw my hat into the ring and show my EverQuest beta testing disc. Yes, that's right. Back in the day when they wanted to beta test a game, they had to mail physical copies out to everyone because downloading this massive game, and it was gigantic for its time, was just not reasonable on a dial-up connection. Now what you're watching here is me tanking the crypt in Sebelis on my bard. Now bards are not traditionally tanks. In EverQuest they're sort of a hybrid between a rogue and an enchanter. But they did have the benefit of being plate wearers so they could really crank up their armor class. Now this footage is actually from an emulated server, Project 1999. This server was launched around the 10 year anniversary of EverQuest. So it's celebrating its 10 year anniversary right now. Now emulated servers have been a taboo subject for these classic RPG games. Blizzard Activision took the stance of hitting these emulated servers with cease and desist orders, threatening legal action if they did not stop operating. And there has been loads of drama surrounding that decision over the years. And it really reached a fever pitch when the producer of World of Warcraft let us know just how out of touch with the fan base he was. Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. <laughs> Remember when you had to like spam cities and say, need a tank, need a tank, need a tank during the Burning Crusade days. You don't remember that because now you just push a button that says go to the dungeon. Oh, we remember it back when RPGs were good. No, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be something in the UI that helps you find groups that are looking to go on an adventure. But this is just the producer massively missing the point of what people wanted out of classic servers. Daybreak Games, Sony Online Entertainment, was the total polar opposite towards classic servers, as Blizzard Activision was. They certainly were a little slower on releasing those servers than some of the community members may have wanted. Hence, we had emulators at the 10-year mark. But rather than do everything they could to shut them down, John Smedley actually came to an agreement with these servers and say, hey, you can keep operating, just stay out of our hair when we're releasing fresh servers or expansions and Daybreak Games got on the train and started releasing classic servers so people could relive the experience that they remembered and loved. Loading into classic EverQuest with the original loading screen on your 4K monitor is a hilarious reminder of just how far we've come. If I remember correctly, I want to say that 640 by 480 that dot in the center of your screen there is all the pixels you used to get. Obviously, each pixel is a lot bigger, but you can see the challenge of trying to create graphical fidelity with so few pixels. But man, they did it. The immersion in this game was off the charts. Some of you may have never seen it because you're younger. Some of you may have never seen it because you started on World of Warcraft. Some of you may have just been first person shooter fans throughout the entire time period. Whatever your reason for not checking it out, I highly recommend checking it out now. Especially if you intend to play World of Warcraft Classic. I'm not saying this game is better. It's not really. I like it more. I like the aesthetics. I like the lore more. But World of Warcraft was certainly a leap forward in terms of technology for what an RPG could be. But it is totally worth checking out this piece of history. And right now is the perfect time to do it because with the 20th anniversary of EverQuest... They've just released two of these classic servers. What that means is everyone's starting from zero. The emulated server Project 99 is a great server, but it's 10 years old. The economy is so wildly out of whack because there's been so many years for people to find currency. And the starting zones are not nearly as full as they once were. Right now you can hop into these brand new servers that they've just released. No one is a super high level. 
the newbie zones will be filled with people, and the economy is not broken yet from years of people farming hill giants. They were releasing one server called Cellos. It acquired its name from the bard song Cellos Accelerando, which drastically increases your speed. It is faster leveling, and it is unlocked through Shadows of Luslin, which was the third expansion for EverQuest, which means on launch you can create Ixar and Vasher characters. That's the lizard race that lives on Kunark and the kitty race that lives on the moon. The Mangler server is a time-locked progression server. Initially, the expansions will be released every 12 weeks, and then once they hit the gates of Discord expansion, it will drop to 8 weeks for expansions that don't have a level cap increase. In this manner, you can follow along with a more historical progression of a server. Just know, even though EverQuest has gone free to play, that's for the old servers. If you do want to jump into these new servers, you are required to have a membership. If you happen to have a membership for Planetside 2, or if you bought one of the lifetime memberships, that will work to play on these servers in EverQuest. If you did play EverQuest, it's fun to log in again. Your characters will still be there. And it is free to play now, so you're welcome to hop on them and get in game. I will say the way the free to play system is built, if you want to progress, if you want to level, it is basically required to buy a membership. But you can still get in game and run around without a membership. Good time to get back in and reminisce a little bit. And realize just how out of touch you are with the game. So guys, now let's jump back over to Planet Side. Or should we call it Tanarus 3 per Smedley's tweet? These two franchises, Planetside and EverQuest, are really the building blocks of what is now Daybreak Games. They had a couple of their games, like a top-down shooter called Infantry, but Tanarus is really when they took it to the next level, going full-on, first-person, three-dimensional gameplay. And they carried that cutting-edge technology into EverQuest. There were already plenty of two-dimensional RPGs out there, but going 3D really brought the immersion. To celebrate EverQuest's 20th anniversary, Planetside is having its own little event, which have a bunch of directives with names honoring some of the key characters in EverQuest. Firiona Vi, for example, is the protagonist in the second expansion of EverQuest. She's the high elf chick that all the cosplayers dress up as. Nagafin was the fire-based dragon in the vanilla EverQuest release. Fippy Darkpaw was a legend. He was basically the Leroy Jenkins of EverQuest if Leroy were an NPC. He was a low-level knoll that spawned in a newbie zone, and the NPC guards at the gates were high level so newbies could run to them and the guards would save them. And this guy was on a seven minute spawn timer. You knew when he showed up because he'd say something in yell chat for everyone to see, then he'd immediately charge the guards and die. So because it happened so often and the results were always the same, that he would get instantly wrecked by the guards if a player didn't get him first, he became a legend for his tenacity. I was bummed they didn't stick with Classic Cleric, which is the Revive class in EverQuest. And the Scouts of EverQuest in the early days were really the Bards and the Monks. And then as you get up to the Expert rank, you'll be able to earn the Fate Sealer. The knife reward you'll get from completing these directives. In the second expansion for EverQuest, there were armor sets for all the classes. Venril Sathir was the ghost of an ancient powerful Ixar, who ruled Karnor's castle and he dropped the leg piece for that armor set. The Plains of Power was the fourth expansion for EverQuest and a beloved expansion. The way EverQuest was originally set up was there were no instances. Everything was open world. You could always engage with the other people. And much of the end game content was based around traveling to the Plains and fighting the gods of Norath. The originals were the Plain of Hate and the Plain of Fear. These Plains lorded over by their respective gods. Interact the God of Hate, Kazak Thol, the god of fear. And they had the plane of sky and the plane of mischief. And that was the ultimate goal, to defeat these all-powerful beings. The second, third, and fourth expansions, Kunark, Velius, and Luslin, respectively, sort of moved away from that concept and had different antagonists. Planes of Power brought us right back to that concept where you battled all sorts of different deities of Norath. The summoner in EverQuest was called the Magician. They could summon elementals to fight for them. And one of their very large roles in the raid game was, yes, to summon your raid. They would be parked at a boss. When a boss spawned, they'd use Call of the Hero and summon your raid down to that engagement. And then on to the final tier, 
The froglocks of EverQuest were sort of like the murlocs of World of Warcraft. They were originally just one of the NPCs that you fought in Lower and Upper Guck, but everyone loved them and with the Legacy of Yakisha expansion, they brought them as a playable character to the game. Overlord Matamurum is sort of the last boss in the eighth expansion of EverQuest. Not an expansion I played, so I don't know anything about him. Mismor was a zone in the original EverQuest with a vampire theme. And Mayon Mismor would sort of be the elder vampire of the coven. Faradar was one of the dragons that ruled Vishan's Peak, which was basically the endgame rating of the second expansion, Ruins of Kunark. You can check the cards if you want to see a Faradar fight. And then finally, to complete your dagger, you will upgrade your Fate Stealer to the Nightshade. Now these names are also from EverQuest. EverQuest had something called Epic Weapons. Each class could do a long and involved quest to earn their epic. Majority of them, you literally needed your entire guild, the equivalent of an outfit, to help you complete it. It would be akin to like a legendary in World of Warcraft. But anyways, the Rogue Epic 1.0 was the Ragebringer. The Epic 1.5 was the Fate Stealer. Just... And the Rogue Epic 2.0 was Nightshade Blade of Entropy. So this dagger inherits its name from that line of quests. It looks like when you're holding the weapon, there's a little blurb on your screen that gives some lore. In this case, it's a picture. It doesn't say the dragon's name, but it's Faradar and the lore behind that dragon while you're holding that dagger. I don't want to spoil how to empower the knife, but if someone is looking for help with it, I want that help to be there. So in the description, I'm going to have a link to a Reddit thread that explains how to do it. Don't click that link if you don't want it spoiled. If you need help, check that out. For hunting for the shinies, you're looking for something that looks like this. And just know they are not on the snowman pumpkin loot rotation. Drew added spawn locations specific for this event. They are in more sort of point of interest type of locations. Under big crystals, at the bottom of the crater, at the top of the mountain. They're a little bit more of a treasure rather than placed randomly along a road. Happy hunting there. The next big news of the patch is that they have released the Doku Carbines. I have not played around with them enough yet to do a review. I do intend to get to that later on. But for now, just know that they're out there. And if you've been waiting around for a new weapon to Araxium, that has arrived. What else came down with this patch? NC Maxes got nerfed, slugs were taken away, TR and VS can rejoice, and NC can now weep. Sorry guys, I hate balance discussion in general. I remember back, I think it was around launch, where everyone was complaining NC Maxes didn't have range, so they gave him slugs. And now everyone's complained about slugs for the past however long. I think majority of people will be happy with those changes, just not NC. Main battle tanks became a lot more lethal. They readjusted the amount of shots to kill in order to get them closer back to pre-combined arms initiative. And they added a new ESF secondary weapon called the Worm. It's basically wing-mounted heavy machine guns that there are no attachments for. Sort of intended as a counter to Liberator's galaxies and could be used against ground-based vehicles. Heavy damage, lower projectile speed. So guys, that's sort of the major details for right now. I did a couple weeks back pass along that Rel mentioned DirectX 11 possibly last week. That has not happened. I'm sure they're very swamped with the EverQuest 20th anniversary, but they're definitely making progress on the test server. They're switching up the UI. The NS operatives are working better again. Things are moving along. Just know no DirectX 11 yet, but I will let you know the moment I see it hit the test server. Okay, folks, that's all I got for you for right now. If you happen to be an EverQuest player or if you go check it out, please, down in the comments, share your thoughts. Share what you loved about it. If you're just checking it out on its 20th anniversary, share what you thought about it there from a new player perspective. That's all for now, fellow Narathians, fellow Araxians. Until next time, I will see you planetside.